Hi everybody, it's Lori here, and I just got my seeds in from Prairie Moon Nursery, and I'm going to show you what I got. This is Pycnanthium muticum, or clustered mountain mint. I do have a slender leaf mountain mint, and I've wanted to try some other mountain mints because the pollinators just go crazy over this plant. Anyway, this clustered mountain mint is native to the eastern half of the United States. Uh, it's a clumping plant. It grows by rhizomes, and it will grow to be about three feet tall, so it's a good size for the gardens. And it's not supposed to be hugely spreading like some other mountain mints are, and it will get some small pinkish white flowers on it, and this is what uh, makes the pollinators go absolutely bananas for Now this one has a, uh, you can just directly plant this one. The nice thing about Prairie Moon Nursery is that they provide you methods on the best way to get the seeds to germinate. And this one, the germination code is A, which means you can just go ahead and plant it as you would any, say any old annual seed or whatever, it doesn't need any special treatment. Next up is the spotted bee balm, or the Monarda punctata. This one is hardy in zones three through nine, and it grows through the eastern half of the U.S. and some parts of the south, southern U.S., like California, uh, into Texas, and along there. This grows about two feet tall, and in fact, I'm actually thinking I'm going to put this in our little hell strip we have by the side of the road. It's supposed to do well in kind of a dry, sandy type of soil, which we have that gets pretty beat up from salt and snow and just kind of pretty junky soil. <laughs> this one also has the germination code of A, so you should just be able to plant the seeds on this one. This is a pretty hardy plant. It does tolerate drought and sun a lot more than other the bee balms do, and it does not seem to be as susceptible to the powdery mildew. This also will attract honeybees, bumblebees, and it also will attract the Carner blue butterfly, which is a very rare butterfly, and we do have them in the area, not uh, right near where I am, but uh, 15 miles away, there's a preserve that has them. So I'm, I don't know how well they travel, uh, but I'm hoping I can kind of maybe find some way to get them to come over here. Uh, I don't know if they fly by and might see patches of these and the lupins that I'm also going to grow, but we'll see. This also does not tend to get nibbled by rabbits or deer or anything because it has an unpleasant taste to them. So there's another plus. And I'm not sure if I said yet, but this grows about two feet tall. Next up is the partridge pea, or Camacrista fasciculata. Hoping I sing that right. The partridge pea. Now this is an annual. Now that's kind of interesting. Usually you don't find a lot of native annual seeds, but this is one of them. The range for this one is about, I'd say two thirds of the US from the East Coast, two thirds uh, all the way over to the West. So it has a quite a good range. Uh, it does like full to partial sun and soil kind of medium to medium dry, again, kind of like prairie plant. And it grows two feet tall and it's full of yellow flowers. It kind of reminds me of the wild senna. Uh, it looks a lot like wild senna, but it's a lot smaller. <laughs> I kind of wanted to do the wild senna, but this is much smaller at two feet and will definitely be able to fit in my garden. The partridge pea is also called the sensitive plant because when you touch the leaves, they actually will curl up a little bit. So that's kind of a little fun little fact. Um, it's also a host for the little yellow, sleepy orange and orange sulfur butterflies. So I'm really hoping I can get to see some of those using my plants as their host plant. It will self seed readily. So might be something to keep in mind. I'm hoping to collect a lot of seeds from it. I'm going to be growing it some in pots and I think some into the garden itself. This plant will grow in zones four to nine. Again, it's an annual. So when it says zones four to nine, I'm just assuming that it will overwinter as reseeding itself in those zones. 
Next up is wild blue phlox or phlox divericata. This is again a native plant <laughs> as all of these are. This one is hardy in zones three to eight and it only grows about 12 inches tall and this will take partial to, to mostly shady spots. So this is really good for a woodland garden or I'm gonna be putting it in my shade bed since I need some more flowers in there. It is native to the eastern half of the United States. This will bloom in April, May, and June. And it does like some somewhat uh, damp soil, not really, really wet, but you don't want to let it get really dry. It's not really a drought tolerant plant. Now, one thing with this plant, you don't want to confuse it with another plant called Dame's Rocket, which is a non-native plant in the mustard family, which kind of looks like this and it blooms at the same time. And so you can sometimes get them confused and people will be wanting and planting Dame's Rocket instead. So if you want to distinguish the native plant from the invasive plant or the non-native plant, uh, the Dame's Rocket has four flower petals and the native phlox has five flower petals. You can see each flower there has five petals on it. And the germination code for this one is C60. And what that means is that you do cold stratification where you can either winter sow this outside and you don't need to worry about the number of days, or if you're gonna be doing it artificially inside where you would put the seeds in a wet sand or in a damp paper towel and you put it in your fridge and it would be for 60 days before you bring it out and, and then try to germinate it. I'm going to be doing some winter sowing in milk jugs with these, so I'm not going to worry about that. And I will have a video on that coming up later. Next up is the sundial lupin or lupinus perennis. Now this is now called sundial lupin. Uh, the name was changed. It used to just be called wild lupin, but there were two kinds of wild lupins. There's the Western lupin, and then there's this one which they now call the sundial lupin. The Carner blue butterfly only will use the sundial lupin as its host plant. And so Prairie Moon is trying to distinguish between the two so you know which seed you're getting. Since again, as I said earlier, I'm trying to at least have the hope of attracting some of the nearby Carner blue butterflies to my garden. So I needed to make sure that I got this seed. Uh, this will bloom in May, June, and July, and it grows about two feet tall. So I am also going to try to put this out in the front house strip as well because it takes some it takes some dry soil, which is a, a good thing for that area by the road. And we'll see how that does there. Plus, I figure the more real estate I use to try to attract the Carner Blues with the different plants, the better. So again, this is native to the eastern part of the United States, not the western. And this has a germination code where it needs cold stratification again. And this one says 10 days. That's not very long. <laughs> you would just need to keep it in moist in the fridge for 10 days before you planted it. Again, I'm going to, I'm actually going to do some of that uh, indoors. And I'm also going to seed some in winter sowing in jugs outdoors. See which one does better for me. And the last one is prairie smoke or geum triflorum. This is such a cool plant. I actually bought some bare root plants from them from Prairie Moon last year. I bought three of these because I had read that they're really hard to get to germinate as seeds and I just wanted to get the plants in the ground. So I went ahead and got three, planted them last year and they didn't grow a whole lot, but you know, that whole um, sleep creep leap Thing for planting plants. So hopefully I'll see some growth next year. But then I saw a video of someone who did these from seed and they had great germination. So I thought, well, I'm going to give it a try. Anyway, this plant is uh, a perennial and it's hardy in zones three through seven. And it only grows about eight inches tall and it can take full or partial sun. And a lot of times you see these are in mass plantings under trees. Where they get a little bit of shade but not lots of shade so i do have some under a shrub out back and i'm going to be planting some of this again i'm going to think i'm going to be putting this uh, in the front 
area of the house and see what happens, as well as in the rest of the garden. Now this one has a the germination code of cold stratification with 60 days. And on their website, they say that it may be difficult or slow to germinate. So again, I'm not sure how well it'll do. This packet comes with 80 seeds. So I'll probably try half and half uh, inside and then half outside with the winter sowing and see how it does. So those are all of my plants that I've got planned for the garden this year. You know, I said to myself that, oh, I'm not going to do so much by uh, seed this year. I'm going to do mostly just dividing the plants that I have, and I'm just going to order a little bit. And then next thing I know, I have all of these seeds. <laughs> and I also have some annuals too. So I'm going to have a little full greenhouse again. So what are you planning or planning to start from seed this year in your garden? Any native plants or any kind of fun thing? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Thank you.